Welcome to Jammin' with Jason Mefford, a show where we discuss topics relevant to chief audit executives and professionals in audit, risk, and compliance. We discuss the technical and soft skills needed to navigate the minefields of organizations. You hear best practices and practical advice for helping you advance your career, and we'll even talk about music, mindfulness, and psychology, because we can. So sit back and relax while you listen to the number one podcast in the world for internal auditors, unscripted and unedited. Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, my friends, it's good to be back uh, in a solo episode again with you. I know uh, the last uh, month or so, it's been pretty much an uh, interview session, and uh, that's because I've been busy doing some other things uh, and uh, haven't uh, had the time to record some solo episodes. So I'll give you a little bit more information about that uh, in just a little bit as far as what I've been up to. Um, But uh, to start off with, I wanted to do some shout outs uh, to people who listen to the podcast regularly. Uh, This is something that I love to do. I I love hearing uh, when people are actually listening to the podcast. So uh, if you're a regular listener, do me a favor, uh, send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a direct message uh, on there. And and do me a favor if you're connecting on LinkedIn. Um, let me know that you're a podcast listener uh, by doing, uh, you know, a, a little introduction. You know, and don't just don't just click on connect, but actually send me a little message because uh, I get I get so many messages or so many connection requests from people, random people, uh, that most of them I just ignore, uh, and I and I don't want to ignore yours if you're a regular listener. So. Let me know that you're a listener. Let me know what you like uh, about the podcast so I can keep doing that. And uh, I, because one, one of the benefits, I just randomly kind of select people uh, that uh, send in to me and give a shout out uh, to people on, uh, on the podcast. So let's do the first one. Uh, This is from uh, Riza Baramida. I hope I said that right. Um, It says, hi, sir, I listened to your podcast just recently, and it helped me a lot to understand risk-based audit. It was easy to understand, especially for me as a new auditor that has been tasked in championing to transform our internal audit to risk-based. We'll be looking forward to your every episode. So Riza, glad you're listening, um, and thank you for sending that in. Uh, let's maybe do one more and then we'll just jump in. Uh, this one's from Mike Shand and Mike says, your delivery was very refreshing, a no BS approach where often many internal audit presenters are very stiff. Well, thank you, Mike. I try to do a, a no bullshit approach. Uh, there's no sugar coating on a lot of the stuff that I say. So I appreciate that that you appreciate that as well. And I try not to be stiff. Uh, There's only a few times when I want to be stiff. (laughs) Let your mind go where you want to on that. Uh, But when I'm talking to you, when I'm, when I'm teaching, uh, I don't want to be stiff and I want to be no, no bullshit either because, you know, again, uh, we're all busy and we don't have time for that. So let's just cut to the chase. Let's talk about what we really need to talk about and, uh, and not try to sugarcoat and tiptoe around things uh, that we shouldn't be tiptoeing around. So thanks again for, those, uh, for those, uh, that feedback, everybody. And again, if you are a regular listener, um, please uh, connect with me, send me uh, a little testimonial like that, and you can also be uh, featured on a future episode of Jamming with Jason. Now, uh, I told you at the beginning, uh, you know, I've been kind of really, really busy behind the scenes uh, creating a lot of new content. Um, there, there's several different topics that I've been working on. Uh, and, and so I've, I've really kind of immersed myself in uh, creating a lot of new content uh, that'll be released uh, shortly. And one of those things is the Chief Audit Executive Briefing 
uh, executive leadership program. Now for about a year and a half or two years, I've kind of been sending out weekly emails uh, to people that I know are chief audit executives, just trying to give them a little encouragement uh, and a little, you know, little information that would help them uh, in their job as a chief audit executive. And you know, the more I, I got to thinking about it, the more I've been uh, coaching, uh, you know, other executives as well as chief audit executives, you know, really realize that most challenges that executives have really come down to three things, okay? And these three things tend to be the root cause of almost every challenge that an executive deals with. And those three things are your ability and proficiency in managing relationships with yourself, with your stakeholders, and with your staff. And so what I've, what I've been doing is actually pulling together a complete executive leadership program uh, specifically designed for chief audit executives uh, that uses the ELP model for leadership. Uh, and it's really the, the same uh, information that I've been sharing uh, with top executives that I've been coaching one-on-one -on -one with for years and uh, want to bring this to uh, chief audit executives as well. So that's a, getting them very, very close to launching. Uh, so if you're a chief audit executive, I'll put a link to that down below uh, because I'm sure as you go through the information, you're gonna look at this and go, holy crap, this is exactly what I need. Uh, to help take my career to the next level. Uh, it, it helps you from, you know, putting out some of those fires that it seems like you're fighting all the time. And uh, it really does give you more confidence uh, and help you move into that executive presence that you have to have as an executive, uh, or you end up getting beat up uh, in your organization usually. So uh, that's one of the things I've been working on. Uh, also been doing a lot with uh, you know, coming up with and, and trying to find some new instructors for C-Risk Academy. Uh, and so I know, you know, in, in this time, uh, most all, it, <laughs> I would say all of the live training has been canceled pretty much for the rest of the year. And, you know, I've been working for four years uh, to create the largest online uh, learning platform for internal auditors. And I'm proud to say we've done that. We've got uh, close to 300 courses up there uh, with uh, between 10 and 15. I can't keep track of the count recently, but 10 to 15 of the best uh, world-class instructors in internal audit risk and compliance. So again, I know many of you are probably starting to scramble now that you're realizing it's September. Um, and, uh, and so C-Risk Academy is there. We're here. Uh, to help you with your learning development uh, needs. And, uh, and so again, check it out um, because if it's been a little while since you've been there, uh, there's a whole bunch of new courses uh, that you haven't seen yet. So that's a couple of the things that I've, uh, I've been working on a little bit. Uh, so now let's kind of transition into our discussion today. And uh, the title is A Tale of Two Careers. And so, you know, again, some of you may be looking at that and thinking, well, Jason, that's, that's kind of a weird topic uh, or a <laughs> weird title. Well, I like to come up with weird titles and, uh, and I usually find um, inspiration for some of the things that I want to talk about uh, from some other areas outside of internal audit. And this happens to be one of those. Um, and, it, and, and it comes from, or the inspiration behind this actually comes from the Charles Dickens book, A Tale of Two Cities. And so I'm gonna actually go through and read a little bit uh, from that. Um, but but the, the, the reason for that, let me, let, me get, whoop, let me kind of back up a little bit, right? Is, um, you know, I, I, I used to travel the world a lot. I'd be gone probably 30 to 40 weeks a year uh, teaching people around the world. And uh, so I've, I've gotten to go to London a few times and, and one of the last times that I was there, um, I took a few days and actually played tourist, which is, which is great because London is a fabulous, uh, fabulous city. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. <clears throat> so of course, you know, when you're in London, you got to, if you're going to play the tourist route, you, you know, you've got to go to the Tower of London, 
you know, see the bridge, you know, go, go to all these different um, Buckingham Palace, go see Westminster Abbey and Big Ben. Um, but because <laughs> I'm a little different too, I'm a writer as well. Uh, one of the stops on my little tourist excursion was the apartment of Charles Dickens. So it was an apartment that he lived there in London um, for a while. And so I, I went to that, got to tour through, kind of see, see his, um, they, they tried to kind of recreate pretty much what, uh, what the, the flat uh, or apartment looked like uh, when he lived there back in the 1800s. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, standing in his office and they, they had some period furniture, which means that it's, it's furniture that is, is appropriate for the time period, but did not belong to him. And they also had some furniture that was actually his. And <clears throat> in his study was a desk. And I remember standing there in the study, looking at this desk and wondering which books did he write in that apartment uh, on that particular desk that I've actually read. And so afterwards I went back, did some research. It was actually, I think the time period, if I remember right, uh, you know, one of those that he wrote was A Christmas Carol uh, was on that. And I believe also um, this book, A Tale of Two Cities uh, was one that he also wrote on that desk. And I'm, <laughs> I'm even getting, shivers just kind of thinking about this because as I said it was it was a really surreal moment uh, to be there and think about the work uh, that he did because Charles Dickens is is really regarded as one of the greatest uh, English writers authors of all time uh, in fact the book A Tale of Two Cities is one of the uh, top selling and most uh, printed books in the English language as well. So I got to thinking about that again, uh, you, you know, a little, a little bit ago and, and pulled out the book and kind of reflipped through it. And if you're familiar with the book, it has very, very classic way of starting out uh, this book that, that you'll, that you'll remember. So I want to go through first off and just kind of read uh, read a little bit out of the book because, like I said, this is the inspiration for what I wanted to talk about today in A Tale of Two Careers comes from A Tale of Two Cities. So it starts off, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was an age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present. And, uh, you know, th those words from that, it really, it really paints a picture of these two polar opposites, okay? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And we see polarity in everything uh, in life. You know, when you think about the yin and yang symbol, the yin and yang symbol actually represents that polarity the light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine, okay? And as I thought about, you know, people's careers, uh, and in fact, I, I wrote an email about this a little while ago, and I'll, I'll tell you one of the responses that I got back. Um, but, you know, the, the idea is, as, as I've thought about people's careers, there's a lot of people that are not happy with where they are currently in their career. To them, it's the worst of times. They're not in a job that they like, uh, maybe not working for a company that they like, maybe they're, they, they wanna get promoted, but they don't know how. And so for them, it may be the worst of times. And for others, their career is just going great, right? They're just moving up, uh, you know, getting promoted every few years. They're, they're making more and more money each year. And as I sit back and, and kind of think about that, right, is what's the difference between 
those two different auditors. And so imagine again, you know, two auditors start out, they graduate from the same university, they get similar starting positions, but 10 years later, those two auditors are usually in completely different places, okay? One is still a junior or senior auditor, but the other has moved up to manager, director, or might even be a chief audit executive at some organization, earning three to five times the salary of the first auditor. So again, you, you, you stand back and you think, okay, well, what's the difference between those two auditors? Because it really has nothing to do with luck, okay? And, and the more that I have you know, helped and watched and trained people over the years, I mean, in fact, there's probably been thousands of, of auditors that I have seen generations of auditors kind of go through. And I'm really clear on what the difference is between the two auditors. And I thought you would like to know because, you know, again, some of you may have aspirations. You want to move up in your career and you're sitting there thinking, what is it that it actually takes? Well, the difference between the two auditors, one of them is comfortable doing the same job every day, every week, and every month, okay? That person, you know, might take a few courses, they're checking the boxes on their CPE requirements, but their position never changes because they don't change themselves, okay? They're comfortable where they are, they stay exactly where they are because they're not willing to invest the time and money in themselves to change themselves, right? Because until they change themselves, their situation will not change, okay? The other auditor is active in their career development, regularly invests both time and money in their individual learning and career. They're growing, they're developing every day, every week, every month. And at the end of 10 years, they are a completely different person than they were from when they graduated college 10 years before. So it's really no wonder that if you've got one person who is actively investing time and money in their career and in their learning and really have that lifelong learning approach, it's, it's no wonder at all that they get further ahead in their career than the person who just kind of does enough just to get by and is just kind of checking the boxes. Because what I'll tell you is training is not the same as learning, okay? Now, again, I've, I've done a lot of training, but really what I've, what I've tried to do and what I'm doing with C-Risk Academy is creating a learning platform not a training company. Okay, training companies just come in, they give you the training, they go away, that's it. They're telling you a little bit of knowledge and skills, but there's, there's no way really for you to apply and then actually exercise or put that into practice. And you really have to have all four of those areas in order to really learn. And I know I've, I can't remember which of the episodes it was, but I've talked about that before in earlier episodes. So if you've got questions about it, go back, find that other episode uh, and take a listen to that, okay? But that's really, you know, so again, as, as we go back to our, dis, to our discussion, you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Well, for the person that's actively learning, actively growing in their career, it's probably the best of times. The person who's not, it may just be the worst part, you know, <laughs> the worst times, right? Again, that polarity between the two. Now, before I get going too much further, I wanna, I wanna just kind of put a pause here um, because I know that when, I, when I've talked about this before, some people have gotten offended, okay? Uh, in fact, I had somebody <laughs> who actually sent me a message and said comments, you know, the comments that you're making are insulting to an auditor who does not aspire to be a chief audit executive and is content as a junior or senior auditor. Now, let me just kind of pause there and actually give you some very valuable coaching. I did not offend that person. That person chose to be offended by what I said. Okay, did you get that? I did not offend that person. 
they chose to be offended by what I said. And the reason they chose to be offended is because they weren't actually listening <laughs> to what I was saying. If you're happy being a junior or senior auditor, good luck to you, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is when I find people that, that are complaining, they want more in their career and they're not willing to do more, okay? Now, why am I bringing this up to you again? As I said to begin with, you know, I, I care for you, for you and for your career. And I know that there are some of you that are out there that want to move forward in your career. And so I want to give you the guidance and be able to help you move forward if that's what you want to do, okay? If you're not interested in that, fine. I, I have absolutely no problem with that. I still respect and love you as a, as a person. Um, but if you're serious, I want to help give you what you need to move forward. But I don't want you to just take my, my words for it, okay? If you go back, and for any of you that have listened for a long time to the podcast, I've done a lot of episodes on lessons from a chief audit executive, okay? And so if you go back and if you listen to almost any of those episodes, one of the things that we talk about is how did that person get to that point in their career? And there is a common theme that you see with people who move up and get promoted in their career. And that common theme is their ability and their, their drive to invest both time and money into their individual learning and into their career. They take it seriously. In fact, one of the CEOs, I remember he called it, you've gotta be the CEO of your career. And that is a great way of thinking about it. Now, the other reason why I bring this up is sometimes, you know, some of you may be sitting there thinking, well, I'm, I really am kind of happy with where I'm at. So I'm just gonna kind of do what I need to to get by. Uh, here's the problem with that is, you know, I'm sure you realize that we, we live in the information age, right? And the information age, yes, while it includes uh, information technology, and so a lot of people think of the information age equaling you know, technology, hardware, software, things like that. The information age is much more than that. In fact, it is the information that you have and that you have learned is what makes you valuable and relevant in today's uh, business marketplace, okay? Which means I want you to think about, uh, I don't know if you ever played this game uh, as I did when I was a teenager. You know, we used to go to the mall and to some other places like that that had escalators. And, you know, escalators are, are kind of a moving staircase, right? You walk onto it and, and the motor just kind of takes you up to the next level. And it's great, right? You don't have to climb stairs. It's much easier to do. Well, we used to play a game where we would try to run up the down escalator. So we check and make sure that nobody <laughs> was on trying to come up and then we would try to run really quick to get up to the top of the down escalator. Now, the only way to get to the top of the down escalator is you have to run faster than the escalator is moving so that you can move upwards, right? Okay, now I want you to think about that and realize that in today's economy, we are trying to go up a down escalator. The amount of information and knowledge and data that is being created every single day is amazing, okay? And we almost have to, you know, run up the escalator in our personal uh, development and in our career development in order to just stay even with where we would have been before. And so again, I want you to think about that as if, if you're just kind of sitting back thinking, well, I'm just gonna coast. The reality is before you know it, you're gonna be at the bottom of that escalator 
and your job might be outsourced, your job might go away because again, value in the information age comes from the information that we have, i.e. which comes through learning and through experience, right? Uh, and those jobs uh, that don't require <laughs> that, that information and that knowledge are being outsourced to things like computers, okay? So again, um, you know, for a few of you, I might be juggle, joggling you a little bit. <clears throat> again, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm just trying to be kind and let you know that uh, the world is different now than it was 20 years ago. And unless we become lifelong learners, unless we invest both time and money into our individual learning and into our career, um, the writing may be on the wall. And that's why, you know, I tell people, you know, look, I know that a lot of certifications and other things tell you, you need to have 40 hours of CPE every year. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you, you don't need 40 hours of CPE a year. You need 400 hours of CPE a year. And some of you may be going, what, how could I ever do that? Well, there's 365 days in a year. If you, you know, an average of one hour a day, you're getting pretty close to 400. Now, in that 400 hours, I'm not necessarily talking about just taking formal training courses. I'm talking about spending time doing things like reading books, listening to podcasts, uh, you know, taking, uh, you know, technical training, but also soft skills training as well you know, going through things like the Chief Audit Executive Briefing Executive Leadership Program, something to where you're learning and you're trying to do something and develop yourself every single day. And that learning and that development does not necessarily have to be technical. You know, um, I'm, I'm a very diverse person and colorful person in lots of different ways. And as an example, one thing I like to do is paint. So sometimes I pick up the paintbrush and paint and try to learn how to improve my ability to paint, right? Or I pick up the guitar and I play. Those are all still learning and development opportunities uh, that help make us a much more well-rounded person, uh, which also makes us more valuable to our organizations as well, because we have diverse experience, we're able to think better, and, uh, and solve problems better, uh, as well as we end up, you know, just learning more information, right? Um, <laughs> as an aside, one of my favorite things to do is just sit and read through Trivial Pursuit cards, if you're familiar with that game. Anyway, so what, again, what I'm trying to say is to kind of wrap it up and bring it, bring it around the corner here for this week's episode is, um, you know, if, if you wanna move forward in your career, uh, there's really a tale of two careers um, and, and you can choose to do what it is that you want to do, right? Uh, and again, if you want to move forward in your career, start looking for different learning opportunities where you're improving yourself every day, every week, and every month. Uh, and and here's, here's another reason for that. And why, why I say every day, every week, and every month is imagine, you know, again, if I want to get fit, if I want to, if I want to strengthen my body, uh, one thing that I, that I do is push-ups, okay? The exercise push-ups where you get down on the ground and you, you go down and you push yourself back up. It strengthens your arms, okay? If I chose to only do push-ups a couple of times a year, how strong am I going to get? Now, even if those couple of times a year, I sit down and I do 200 push-ups, I'm gonna get some benefit from it, but you get much more benefit by doing a few push-ups every day, every week, and every month. That's the same thing I'm telling you or encouraging you to do with your brain as well. Because those little things that we do every day, every week, and every month, ends up working and developing our brain uh, just like those push-ups do. So again, if you're serious about, you, about your career, if you wanna move forward in it, if you wanna learn new things, start looking for some of those 
learning opportunities, right? Because, you know, again, if we kind of go back to where we were talking about to begin with, uh, you know, from a tale of two cities, right? I hope that every other line here uh, ends up getting deleted from your life. And so instead of saying it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, we can just say it was the best of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the epoch of belief. It was the season of light. It was the spring of hope. We had everything before us and we are going direct to heaven. Okay, take those negative things out. Uh, focus on the positive. Get the things in life that you need because uh, that's really what I want for you. That's what I'm trying to do for myself uh, every single day as well. So with that, my friends, I'm going to wrap up for this week. Uh, go out, make life what you want it to be. Choose what you want and actually go after it. Uh, and don't get into some of the blame, excuse, and denial that I've talked about in other podcasts as well with my friend Marty. Uh, so go out, have a great rest of your week, and I will catch you on the next episode of Jamming with Jason. See ya. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Jamming with Jason. Keep on rocking in the audit world. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you later on the next show. If you'd like to earn continuing professional education for listening to today's episode, head on over to C-Risk Academy at ondemand.criskacademy.com. And that's C as in the letter C, riskacademy.com. Not only do you get a CPE certificate, but you also will have access to the video version of today's show. The views and opinions expressed on this show are that of the individuals and not of their respective organizations.